Good morning. Um, I'm happy to be back. Alicia Solomon and I had a fabulous vacation. Um, we really enjoyed it. It was restful. It was pleasant. It was enjoyable. Um, but it's always nice to be home, and I'm very pleased to be back with you. I miss you. I miss you when I'm gone. You'll notice my horse is a little, or my voice is a little hoarse, and I'm sorry about that. I was at the football game yesterday, so I have to say that I'm tempted to preach on the importance of good officiating, um, but I won't. I'll, I'll stick with the sermon based on the reading from Hebrews today. A reading from Hebrews, it presents a litany of faith through all of the 11th chapter. Going way back to the stories of Genesis, the author highlight some of the big examples of faith as a way to encourage the Hebrew community. This encouragement that he offers is really based on a certain truth, and the truth is that faith makes a difference. If it were not for faith, the people of Israel would not have walked upon dry land through the Red Sea. Israel would not have been able to endure jeers and floggings and chains and imprisonment. Whether it is receiving a victory, whether it is administering justice, making a decision, whether it is uh, enduring something hard, faith, active and acted upon faith, it makes a difference. And so the author of Hebrews encourages the people to see their own lives as the next chapter of this great story. And the history of faith is an encouragement because it is our own story to which we continue. So just as faith made a difference in the lives of David and Samson and Moses and Gideon and the prophets, so too our faith should make a difference in our lives as we actively live it out. Faith is not something we have. It is a way we live. It is an attitude, it is an expression of who we are and how we interact with this world. Faith is the active participation in the ongoing relationship with our Lord. I'm going to say that again. It's a great little definition of faith. Faith is the active participation in the ongoing relationship with our Lord. We can't just say, yeah, I have faith, and never act upon it. Right? In the fall of Jericho, Israel actually had to walk around the city. They couldn't just reside back in safety and think, well, you know, I really believe that God's going to deliver it. And so we're just going to wait for that to happen. No, they actually had to get up. They had to grab their trumpets. And they had to walk around the city. So faith has to be embodied. And what is important in this grand litany of faith that the author depicts here is that we are called to act on our faith sometimes in the midst of of hard times. When you go through the people that are mentioned, what you will notice is that sometimes they face some pretty harsh things. And so this vision of faith, this grand litany of faith that the author puts forward, it's a very realistic look. There's no prosperity gospel here. Uh, if you're not familiar with the prosperity gospel, the prosperity gospel is very popular today, particularly in the Western world. Which says that faith means that you will never have problems in your life. The more faith that you have, the easier life will be. Because God wants to increase your abundance. God wants to increase your financial wealth. God wants to increase your house. God wants to increase your prosperity. Right? Your faith means that you're going to get that job. Faith means that you're going to get that house. Faith means that you're going to get that financial reward. And God's blessings are seen in the removal of all the hardships and turmoils. And that sounds great, but the ugly side of the prosperity gospel is that what happens when you do come up to a harsh time? What happens when the economy turns south and you do lose your job? What happens when money's a little bit more tight? What happens when you get that unwanted call from a family, from a friend, from a doctor? Well, the prosperity gospel would say, well, that just means you aren't being faithful enough. And you just need to be more faithful. And God will deliver you. So the author of Hebrews is very clear here. That the living out of faith is often seen when there are some tension between what we hope and pray for and sometimes what we experience in our lives. 
Yes, Israel believed that God was leading them to the promised land, but there was a great sea in front of them and an army behind them. Yes, Daniel was a vision of faithfulness to God, and yet he was captured by a foreign army and eventually thrown into a pit of lions. In the times of jeering and flogging and chains and prisons, faith it didn't actually remove those things. And yet, in each of those situations, God's power was seen. God empowered the people in those situations to endure it, to stand firm, to remain faithful, to continue to hold on to him, to face whatever situation that they had day in and day out, trusting and believing, as Hebrews says, that they would gain a better resurrection, that God would be with them, and that ultimately God would win. And so faith means that even in those hard times and difficult places, we believe that we can meet the power of the living God. Even if that power, even if the grace of God means that we are just not overcome by what everything we face. And so for the entire 11th chapter of Hebrews, the author is reminding the Christian community that we stand in that great line of faith and their story is our story. And so he writes, therefore, and that's a connector word, right? Because we are surrounded by this great history of faith, because we are surrounded by such a cloud of witnesses, let's continue. He says, let's throw off every, everything that hinders. Let's run with perseverance. Let's be faithful. The author calls the Christian community to persevere in their faith, to remain steadfast in looking to Jesus, living as a follower. And that was an important message for that community because they were in their time under incredible persecution. People left, right, and center were being arrested and killed. Followers of Jesus, even if they were Hebrew born, they were chucked out of the temple. They were no longer allowed in. And that meant that their children couldn't go to the school at the temple. It sometimes meant that they lost their jobs. It sometimes meant they lost connection to their families. And at first, all of that was met with a certain amount of zeal, right? The righteous zeal of the new convert. Nothing will overtake me. Nothing will shake my faith. It's me and Jesus all the way. And yet, over time, that zeal kind of waned. And people began to wonder, you know, is it worth being a Christian at all? Is it worth following Jesus? Is it worth doing all this? This is what we're facing? And so in response to that, for the entire 11th chapter, the author outlines how the people of God have always persevered in the midst of tremendous obstacles. And through that perseverance, they experience the dramatic, the miraculous, and the powerful presence of God. And so can we the author is saying. So can you. The truth is, what we face is no different than what others faced. We are that next chapter, and their experience of God's providence, their experience of God's strength, their experience of God's help, that can be our experience as well. And so be faithful. Continue on in your faith. Hold on to Jesus. The Christian community, us, we can be encouraged by these heroes of faith, not simply because we remember their stories, not because our heart, because our minds harken back to Sunday school felt boards and coloring book lessons. These heroes of faith who now reside in the kingdom of God, they root for us. They cheer us on. Like a cheering crowd at a sporting event, we are surrounded by people who have in their own lives witnessed the power of God. And so they cheer us on and they say, come on, you can do it. Look to Jesus, he's with you. Keep going, we know it's hard, but we believe in you. We're praying for you. I was thinking about some of the conversations that I am blessed to have throughout my ministry. I cannot tell you how many people have said to me, um, usually after 
um, funerals that they can't see how they could have survived the death of a loved one without their faith holding them up. And they say things like, well, what do you do if you believe that once death comes, that's it, the person is no more. And so they say that my faith is sustaining me. I've talked with people who have lived through the Great Depression with this unwavering belief that God could provide for them even amid times of incredible scarcity. And even when they didn't know literally when their next meal was coming, they believed God would provide. I remember there was a church a little while ago who had a close to a 15-year history of trying to do a building project. And even though there were those who said it would never be done, they had the belief that it could happen. In every single situation, and there's so many more that we could talk about, the commonality in those situations is that there is a vision of life which is rooted in Jesus. Jesus is calling us forward, and I believe that Jesus will provide the future that he's calling us into, even if we don't see it right in this moment. In this great course of faith that we run, with our eyes fixed upon Jesus, he is not only the person that we are running toward, but he's also the person who runs with us, encouraging us, inspiring us, helping us along the way. And so our task as people of faith is to look to Jesus, to keep our eyes fixed upon him. There's a story of Helen Lemel. And I don't know if it's true, um, but this is how the story goes. Helen Lemel was a great musician. Apparently she wrote over 500 hymns. And as the story goes, as an adult, she was diagnosed with a condition that rendered her blind. And um, unable to deal with her blindness, her husband left her. And in response to her blindness, in response to... Uh, this complete change of life that she all of a sudden was thrown into. She wrote this poem. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of this world will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Faith doesn't deny whatever situation we face. It's not a pie in the sky escapism. Faith is not the naive smile that we paste upon ourselves when internally we are struggling. Faith is turning to Jesus in whatever situation we find ourselves in. It is daring to hold on to the presence of Jesus, even if it seems that every ounce of your will is taken up by that. It is boldly and stubbornly saying to yourself, I believe that Jesus is with me in this place today. And then tomorrow, boldly, stubbornly saying, I believe that Jesus is with me in this place. And the next day, boldly and stubbornly. The next day, boldly and stubbornly. And in those times when we don't know if we can do that, the community of faith, the community of witnesses surround us. And they call us to that recognition. That's why the community is so important. The author of Hebrews could have said that, you know, just be inspired by these past stories, but he doesn't. He says that these people surround you, that they join you, they encourage you. Your life of faith is lived in their presence. And their strength and witness can be yours. I remember overhearing a conversation in which one person who was going through an incredibly difficult time said, um, you know, like, I just, I just can't pray. I try and the words don't come and I just can't seem to pray. And the other person uh, looked at them lovingly and just said, it's okay. Let me pray for you. Let me pray for you. We're surrounded by a cloud of witnesses who encourage and support us and pray for us. And what we are called to do is look to Jesus. After all, the path of faith that we walk was carved out by him. We consider him who went to the cross, who endured everything, scorning the shame, in order to secure for us the power and grace of God. Charles Spurgeon once preached, we are helped to run to the end, not only by what Jesus has done for you, by what Jesus is doing in us. Beloved, you that are in the middle of the race, remember that Jesus sustains you.
Faith makes a difference in our lives. Not because it's this magical wish that placates all of life, nor is it because it is an exercise of our ability by which we overcome everything. Faith makes a difference because it is the active turning to Jesus. It is daring to recognize his presence and grace. And his presence changes everything. It changes how we interact with all of our life, amid all the joys and the happiness, but also the struggles and the difficulties. So wherever you are today, turn to Jesus. Look to him. As you walk whatever path you have before you, as you look to him, I pray that you are blessed to hear the encouragement and to feel the prayers of the cloud of witnesses. And that includes the community surrounding you physically today that join you and support you. May you, may we continue this next chapter of faith to the praise and glory of Jesus. Amen.